In the early 1900s, excavations were undertaken in a long-forgotten cave in America. Thousands of artifacts were being recovered, including human remains. Supposedly, they were skeletons, measuring 8 to 10 feet in length. The local Native American tribes still recall the legend of how their ancestors defeated the race of giants near the Lovelock Cave. But the remains extracted from that cave have never been made available to the public. It's as if they are lost to history. In the previous few videos, we've touched upon the theory that giants once roamed the Earth. Giants are mentioned in various cultures across the planet, all the way from India to the United States. Some reports say that their remains have been found all across America. Yet, they aren't displayed in any museum anywhere. History books do not mention them, historians do not recognize their existence, at least not publicly. This smells to me like an X-Files style cover-up. The interesting thing about the ancient myths is that some of them tell a similar story. You probably remember from my video about the Book of Enoch that the ancient Sumerians of Mesopotamia believed in a race of giants called the Anunnaki. They were in fact extraterrestrials from the planet Nibiru, which is supposedly a yet unidentified planet in our solar system. According to Zachariah Stitchin's book, The Twelfth Planet, Nibiru is real and passes near Earth every 3600 years. This planet is also mentioned in ancient Mayan texts, halfway around the world. It was the basis of the hypothesis that the world would end in 2012. But there still might be some truth to it because recently an increasing number of astronomers have reported that there are anomalies which might suggest there is another planet far out in our solar system. It was dubbed Planet X or Planet 9. Even NASA is looking for this celestial object. But I am not an astronomer, so let's get back to the mythical accounts of giants on Earth. A collection of Indian poems and hymns from the second millennium BC known as the Vedas tells about a time called the Satya Yuga. It was a golden age when all of humanity existed in harmony. The difference was, the humans of the time were 32 feet tall. And remember the account of the Nephilim from the Book of Enoch. They are referred to as men of the old times who existed before the Great Flood. They are also mentioned in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, which says there were giants on earth in the old days. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Keep in mind that the religions of India were completely different from Christianity. If we take the Muslim religion into account, it intertwines with Christianity a great deal. The Muslims even consider Jesus to be a prophet. However, the Hindu religion has a thing of its own, so to speak. Hindus believe that there are 330 million gods in total, so I think it's fair to say that it has nothing in common with monotheistic religions like Christianity. So how come they both speak of giants living on earth in the olden days? Before we forge ahead, do you remember the biblical story of David versus Goliath? Well, by some accounts, Goliath was a descendant of a race called the Anakites, which descended from, you guessed it, the Nephilim. But, if so many religions have accounts of giants living on Earth, how come no remains have ever been found? Well, the proof was supposedly found in the Lovelock Cave. You see, legends of giants aren't restricted to the Old World. Many Native American tribes share similar stories, not just about gigantic humanoids, but about the giant flood as well. The Choctaw tribe calls them the Nahulo. They were man-eating giants, and the Choctaw managed to fight them and drive them away. The Paiute tribe tells about red-haired giants. They were known as the Siteka, meaning Thule eaters. Thules is supposedly a very sturdy type of reed, found in swamps, but these giants were actually man-eaters, like the Nahulo. The Siteka were too powerful for just one tribe, so the Paiute united with other tribes. Together, they were able to defeat the giants and drive them into a cave. Then they sealed the cave from the outside with branches and wood, and set it ablaze. The giants either suffocated or were burned alive. Let us fast forward to the 19th century. This is Tokmatone, meaning shell flower. Her western name was Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins. She was a northern Paiute writer, lecturer, and educator. She was also the daughter of a Paiute chief. As such, she became the first person to write down Paiute legends that have been passed on for centuries. The only difference was, she didn't call them legends. She called them history. 
She also claimed that the clothes she was wearing had some red hair from the giants woven into them. After hearing this story, an archaeologist and mining engineer by the name of John T. Reed went to that cave and supposedly found a skeleton of a seven and a half foot Indian. This article from the El Paso Herald Post says that Reed concluded that it belonged to one of the Sitekas, or giant red-haired Indians. Numerous articles about giant skeletons being found popped up. Some believe that the engravings in caves, made by ancient Native American tribes, depict the giants. Such drawings were found in Mesoamerica as well, where there are also abundant legends of man-eating people of great stature. When the Lovelock Cave was being excavated to get guano, used in making gunpowder, a treasure trove of over 10,000 artifacts was discovered. One of the first things the miners noticed was that the entrance to the cave showed signs of extreme scorching. That corroborates the Paiute legends of how they defeated the giants. On one of the walls, a giant handprint was photographed. Inside, they found human bones, many of which were missing the bone marrow. Evidence of cannibalism, perhaps? Among the artifacts, the clothes found were supposedly too big for an ordinary man. The clothes were accompanied by sandals that would correlate with shoes size 29 and an 8 feet tall man. To be honest, when I started going down this rabbit hole, I expected to find one or two accounts of giant skeletons being found. To my surprise, there were so many more. Check this out. Article after article of people digging up huge skeletons. I can't possibly go over all of them now but here are a few. The Serpent Mound, Ohio. A massive 1370 foot long prehistoric effigy mound that was most certainly built by man. We still don't know its purpose, but a meteor crater nearby, a whole bunch of anomalies and UFO sightings, as well as graves of three giants being dug up nearby, all point to the fact that something strange is going on here. To make things even stranger, the skeletons supposedly had double rows of teeth. An anthropologist named Putnam found other skeletons in the area, measuring seven feet or taller, in 1891. Then three years later, a local farmer found strange graves which was important enough to be published in the New York Times. But that's not the only location where giants were found in Ohio. The nearby Miamisburg Mound revealed another gigantic skeleton, taller than eight feet. After two men discovered the bones, Professor Thomas Wilson from the Smithsonian Institute claimed the find was authentic beyond any doubt. He even says he knows of several such findings in the Hopewell Group of Mounds in Ohio. Then, about 60 years later, a curator for the Carnegie Museum unearthed a seven-foot skeleton in West Virginia. A decade after that, workers with the Sauk Rapids Water Power Company dug up an insane 10-foot-long skeleton near the banks of the Mississippi River. The crazy thing is that all of these skeletons somehow disappeared, and the Smithsonian was somehow always in the picture, lurking. A newspaper article from 1897 even describes the Smithsonian working on the Eastern Mounds in Iowa. The article quotes the director of the Bureau of Ethnology confirming that a seven-foot skeleton was found by scientists in a mound in Iowa. Then in the 1930s, a boy from Steelville looking for arrowheads found the remains of an eight-foot giant. This was made public in a newspaper article as well, which stated that a doctor examined and confirmed the astonishing find. The accounts stretch all the way down to California and even Mexico. Stories say that the native tribes drove the giants to the west, and that is why their remains are found as far as California. But, what if they were always there? In total, there were more than 1,000 accounts of skeletons over seven feet tall, found in the states over the span of the last two centuries. It's the entire country of North America that we investigated, from one, you know, from Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, up in Maine, all the way down to Catalina Island on the, in the far kind of southwest regions of California. So every area, and, uh, and we're talking thousands of miles distance when there was no communication, there was no post, there were no trains, nothing like that at the time, all of these reports coming out in local areas. And so, we, you know, you have to take notice of that, especially as the Native Americans themselves were already talking about this. They were talking about these giants. They, they were aware of them. They were their ancestors. They were also describing an earlier group of people, they didn't know who they were, had arrived in the area and terrorized them. 
It seems as if the number of accounts of giants being found keeps rising. In the book, we cover in our previous book, Giants on Record, we've got 250 accounts we put in the book. We had probably at that time 1,200 accounts. Now we have nearly 2,000. And we're not just talking newspapers, we're talking antiquarian journals, archaeological reports, the Smithsonian's own archaeologists digging stuff up, reporting on up to eight foot tall skeletons. We have some that are on display in places like the Maryland um, Museum and universities. And we have numerous like obscure town and county histories that report these doctors and surgeons examining these skeletons that have been dug out of a mound nine feet tall. So it's fair to say that something is going on. If these were just eyewitness accounts, like stories of Bigfoot, then one could easily easily dismiss them. However, many of these accounts include legitimate scientists, researchers, and even doctors who at one point examined the skeletons and confirmed their size. So where are they now? Here's a story that illustrates what probably happened to some of the skeletons. In 1892, wooden coffins were found in Crump's Cave in Alabama. This was very strange because Native Americans did not use coffins, and these looked to be ancient. The documents clearly show that the coffins and all other artifacts uncovered there were sent to the Smithsonian. But when Frederick J. Pohl wrote the Smithsonian in 1950, asking to examine the artifacts, they couldn't find them even though they admitted the records show they were there. After another 40 years passed, another researcher wanted to take a look. He was told the coffins were just wooden throughs for feeding animals. This is stupid for two obvious reasons. First, throughs don't have lids on them, and these boxes had. Secondly, the Native Americans didn't have cattle, pigs, or even horses before the Europeans came. So that makes no sense. But the nonsense was yet to come. They refused to show the artifacts because the storage they were kept in was contaminated with asbestos. They also said the cleanup process would take 10 years. That was just insane. Some claim that the suppression of evidence by the Smithsonian came about after Cyrus Thomas came into the picture. He considered the natives to be just savages. Since the country was waging war on the natives at the time, his political views were upheld. So any notion of the natives descending from advanced civilizations was quickly dismantled and buried, so to speak. I keep wondering why the Smithsonian would keep up with the charade. I mean, it's the 21st century. One would think that times are different than 200 years ago. Now, I might be reaching here, but could it be that the Smithsonian is just trying to keep its head above the water? If the accounts of giants were true, and the Smithsonian was trying to cover it up for over 200 years, then it has to keep it under wraps, or else its entire reputation as the world's largest museum, education, and research complex will be tarnished forever. You could even say that the Smithsonian has a bunch of skeletons in the closet. If you want to learn more about giants, and you like reading books or listening to audiobooks, check out the description below, and support Lost History TV without any cost. Let me know if you liked the video in the comments below, and do me a favor.